This is the morning weather extreme video. This is for Tuesday, the 28th of August. I'm James Spann. Isaac, just having a hard time becoming a hurricane this morning. We'll get in there and talk about it, see if we can answer all of your questions. First off, some uh, images captured from the Skycam network uh, early this morning at the somewhat insane hour of 5 a.m. before the sun was coming up. That's our Skycam at Gulf Shores. On top of the Phoenix All Suites, and down below, you can see our satellite truck down there. They're doing uh, live shots for uh, Good Morning Alabama on ABC 3340, and, and it's not raining at this point. There are some squalls close to uh, Gulf Shores. They'll be getting rain soon. Uh, the peak wind, I think, is 33 miles an hour so far up on top of the uh, building up there. Uh, up the road a bit, that's the Daphne Sky Cam on the eastern shore of Mobile Bay. Off in the distance, you can see the uh, uh, Interstate 10 Bayway lights. And again, things there are quiet for the moment. First off, the uh, big picture, that's the water vapor satellite view. And uh, uh, we've got a heat bubble that's over Colorado and Arizona. And north of that, the primary uh, jet stream, there's a trough off the Pacific coast, the northern Pacific coast, a ridge on top of the heat bubble, and then a downstream trough over the Great Lakes in the northeast. And that uh, uh, trough should pull Isaac northward with time. We'll check the radar this morning. That's at 5.02, and you can see those uh, showers uh, approaching Gulf Shores and Orange Beach. Uh, just some tropical downpours. Uh, some of the feeder bands up on the uh, north side of uh, Isaac. Satellite presentation is just not very impressive. The, uh, the drier air has wrapped into the east and north side, and accordingly, there's just not that much rain. Now, it looks like there might be some type of eye feature trying to form, but based on the reconnaissance data early this morning, the winds were not great enough in the lowest level at the surface to upgrade this to a hurricane. And that dry air has really done the number on this thing. Uh, so as of early this morning, Isaac's still a tropical storm. <coughs> so as of early this morning, Isaac's still a tropical storm with top winds of uh, 70 miles an hour. It is moving to the uh, northwest at about 12. It's about 12 hours away from landfall in southeast Louisiana. Modeling, excellent agreement. That's about as good as it gets. And that's right on the Hurricane Center track. And uh, comes up into southeast Louisiana later today, and it just creeps along. That's part of the problem. It's, I think the heavy rain is going to be the legacy of this. Uh, I mean, it just creeps along. In fact, uh, late Thursday night, it's still near Little Rock. And remember, you know, people... And it's natural. You look at that and you look at the center line and the cone. You think, ooh, Alabama's not going to have any effect at all of this thing. Well, of course, that's horribly wrong. Uh, there's going to be a lot of rain across the state and some risk of uh, isolated tornadoes. We are on that unsettled uh, east side of this. Now, this is interesting. The HPC guys have just changed their map dramatically uh, over the past uh, 12 hours. This is the expected rain from Isaac coming from the Hydrometeorological Prediction Center. And they have really lowered the numbers for the northern part of Alabama. In fact, you go to Huntsville, and that's suggesting just a half inch to three quarters of an inch for the Tennessee Valley. And then for Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Anniston, and Gadsden, only one to one and a half inches. That could be right, but I think we'll get more. Uh, the tremendous rains, of course, are down south, uh, coastal Mississippi. Uh, that's uh, over 15 inches. And for uh, Baldwin County, Alabama, that's about 10 inches. And with a very slow movement of this thing, uh, flooding is going to be a real concern. The storm surge itself, you know, 6 to 12 feet over Mississippi and, and 4 to 8 feet over Alabama, that's not overwhelming. And understand with a Category 1, that's not going to create, you know, a lot of structural damage. There'll be some trees and lines down and power outages down there. But uh, rain could very well be the big deal. And if this is right, we would not have a problem with flooding here. Uh, but again, that map could very well change again, and I think it will. Probably overdone initially, now it's underdone for us. Uh, somewhere in the middle is probably right. Uh, I think we'll probably go with rainfall amounts of 2 to 4 inches for this part of Alabama in the next forecast package based on the guidance we've seen. All right, uh, this is the convective outlook today. The other concern, the possibility of a few tornadoes. Now, you know, with that drier air in the northern periphery of this thing, I don't know, and we have not had a major problem with tornadoes over the Florida Peninsula, but still, with any type of landfalling tropical system like this, you have to mention the chance. Uh, the risk of tornadoes today in that yellow zone, the slight risk, uh, that would include, of course, New Orleans, uh, Mississippi from about uh, Interstate 20 south, uh, Jackson, Meridian South, and in Alabama, that's basically about south of a line from Butler and Choctaw County to Greenville and Butler County. 
down to about uh, Eufaula. So that's the better chance today. And then tomorrow, the risk extends northward uh, of a few isolated small tornadoes. And that would include most of Mississippi, Alabama, from about Hamilton down to Clanton and Opelika and Phoenix City. And then on day three, which is uh, Thursday, uh, there's no formal slight risk, but I think there will be in later outlooks in that 5% area highlights where the greatest chance of isolated tornadoes will be. Uh, about the northern two-thirds of Alabama and Mississippi up into parts of uh, western and middle Tennessee. So really for the next three days, there's potential for a few isolated tornadoes. And like we've talked about a lot, these are not like the violent tornadoes of spring, the strong, violent tornadoes. These tend to be smaller, short-lived, hard to forecast, low top, you know that. So we'll just have to watch for those and deal with it as the uh, system evolves. Now let's go down to the GFS. This is at uh, one o'clock today at 500 millibars. This is the OZ run. And you can see the setup, heat bubble over Colorado and New Mexico, uh, kind of a high amplitude pattern troughing over the eastern U.S. And that's going to be pulling Isaac North very slowly this is 1 o'clock today. System is about at the mouth of the Mississippi. 1 o'clock tomorrow. Look at that. It just doesn't move much. I mean, you go 24 hours and it moves 50 miles or so. And I'm telling you, this is going to drop huge amounts of rain on the coast of Mississippi and probably Alabama too. But understand, you know, if this is right, really this is not suggesting a whole lot of rain for us uh, uh, today and tomorrow. Tropical showers, yes, but... Uh, it could be Thursday. There's Thursday before the really big rains get in here, and I think we'll start to lean that way in the forecast. Uh, the circulation center is near uh, uh, Monroe, Louisiana. Go to Friday. It's uh, up on the Missouri-Arkansas border, and we stay pretty wet. Friday will be in very moist air. The dew point's very high. It's not going to rain all day Friday, but it could rain at any time. All right, Labor Day weekend, you ask. Uh, there's a look at Saturday. The remnant circulation as well to the north. We stay in the moist air, so kind of showery on Saturday. It's going to rain all day. Uh, travelers, uh, if you're going to the uh, Alabama game in uh, Dallas-Fort Worth or in Dallas, actually it's in what Arlington, uh, weather out there looks fine on Saturday. Uh, Auburn is in uh, Atlanta. You know, showers are possible, but it's in the Dome. Hey, who worries about with all these fancy indoor venues? Uh, and by the way, traveling, uh, you know, people flying to Dallas, a lot of questions. Again, the, the odds of any airport issues are pretty small now. You should be fine. If you're driving, you're going to be soaked driving out there, but you can make the drive. Just take it slow and easy. And again, to Atlanta, that's going the other direction, of course. Uh, you'll have some showers, but that won't be that bad. There's Sunday and Labor Day, Monday. And the remnant of uh, Isaac is still just north of us. So for the, for the weekend, the deal is, you know, it's just kind of showery. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. The sun will be out at times probably, but just keep in mind a few passing rain showers are likely. We'll check the end of the forecast. This is, uh, I'm sorry, let's look at Tuesday. This is a week from today. Uh, we've got a flat ridge across the Gulf Coast states, and again, we stay in that soupy air. All right, now the end of the forecast. This is September 12th. That is the anniversary of Hurricane Frederick in 1979. that hit uh, came up through Mobile Bay. Uh, 588 heat bubble well to the west, uh, upper low around Minneapolis, St. Paul, and uh, look at the cool air coming down the pike up there. I love that first good cold front of the fall season. That's you typically in uh, mid to late September. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes on the blog. Next video here by 3.30 or so today. Uh, don't forget to catch us on ABC 3340 this evening at 4, 5, 6, and 10 on the live stream or the television side. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless.